Remembering to take care of your shoes in the first place might seem like a drag, but in reality, it's the cheapest option. And the main philosophy here is preventing, fostering an environment that bacteria can thrive in. When you're getting sweaty in your sockless foot traps, you create a paradise for bacteria that feast on whatever you're leaving behind in your shoes. These bacteria are responsible for creating odors and thrive in environments that are warm, damp, and dark. So what does this mean for prevention? Basically, you just want to prevent any environment that bacteria can thrive in. You can do this by one, taking off your shoes in between problems. This allows your shoes to air out and prevents excess moisture from building up. Two, instead of throwing your shoes inside your bag after you're done climbing, clip your shoes to your bag. Throwing your shoes in your bag after workout is just gonna trap moisture and prevent them from airing out. You wanna store them in a cool, dry location, which also means you might not want to keep them in your car if it gets warm during the day. Lastly, you can wash your feet before you climb to minimize the amount of bacteria you have to start with. While it's nice if you have a new pair of shoes that you want to prevent from getting smelly, I'm assuming that a lot of you who are watching this already have some shoes that you might need to disinfect and deodorize. So out of all of the solutions that I found on the internet, there were four that seemed like they could reliably kill the bacteria, which is the underlying cause of why your shoes smell. Luckily for you, four treatments that I found, I've got four shoes in front of me, so I decided why don't we try each of the treatments on each one of my shoes and see which one works best and which one I like most. The first two treatments are sprays, so that sounds easy, let's just, let's just do that first. First up, I have this Lysol spray. If your gym rents out its own shoes, chances are they deodorize and disinfect the shoes in between rentals using a spray that's like this. Interestingly enough, when I was reading the back, it did say in its precautionary statements that do not spray in eyes, on skin, or on clothing. Wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling and before eating, blah, blah, blah. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. But if it's good enough for the climbing gym, it's probably good enough for me. So let's spray and see what happens. Okay, so it just got all over my hands, but maybe wear gloves for this. So right away, I can see that there's some liquid that's pooled in here. So I would recommend maybe letting this dry before you um, slip your foot in if you do need to take caution with skin contact. But that was probably the easiest out of all the treatments that I'm gonna show you today. At my local grocery store, this was $4.99 US dollars, so not too expensive. Next up is also a spray, and I think it's supposed to mimic what the Lysol spray does. I read somewhere that you could put 99% isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle and then just spray your shoes down, but after doing some research, I think that 70% isopropyl does the job just fine as well. So I picked up some 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol from the store. This was $1.50 and my grocery store didn't have a spray bottle, so what I did is I just emptied out a spray bottle that I already had. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in the spray bottle and spray it down. All right, same as the Lysol spray. I'm just gonna kind of, yeah, just get it all in there. It smells like isopropyl alcohol. The next two solutions seem a little bit more involved and they require a little bit of scrubbing, a little bit of elbow grease. I read that if you use a mild detergent or an antibacterial hand soap, and an old toothbrush that you would be able to scrub away all the bacteria inside under running water. And let's uh, head over to some running water, shall we? Welcome to my bathroom. I feel like this is new uncharted territory for us. Let's get the water going. And lastly, something that was recommended online was to just dilute a little bit of vinegar and water and use that as your cleaning solution rather than a soap that you buy from the store. And so right here, I have some apple cider vinegar. I'm hoping that it does the same thing as regular white vinegar, but you're just supposed to dilute this like one to 50 in water and then use that and scrub your shoe the same way that you would do with the soap. Things I'm worried about. Will my shoes smell like vinegar after this? I really hope not. Will this somehow corrode the materials of my shoes? I really hope not. Let's go try it out.
So when I was going into the bathtub to rinse out my shoes, I realized that it was actually too gross to show you guys. And so that just really didn't align with my brand's vision. I was actually really surprised to see how dirty my shoes were. I challenge each of you, if you have shoes that you suspect are a little dirty, try this method and see what happens because it was gross, but also like oddly really satisfying at the same time. After I washed those shoes, I just brought all the shoes outside to dry in the sun. Although, as you can see, there isn't a lot of sun today, so I'm hoping that just like being outside in the air is going to help them to dry. I don't, I don't know, there's nothing really I can do. I do not recommend putting your shoes in the dryer because the excessive heat can actually wear away the rubber and the material that helps keep your shoes together. Also, while those are drying, there are some other things that I thought I would Bring up. You might have heard of some of these quick fixes before, like stuffing dryer sheets in your shoes or using baking soda, even chalk, to dry out your shoes. And while those might deodorize your shoes, here's why you might want to think twice about using a treatment that is not antibacterial but is deodorizing to some extent. So first up is dryer sheets. I have personally used dryer sheets before. They have this like scent that's embedded into them and so when you stick them into shoes they mask the gross odor by putting like a cleaner scent on top of it so it's not really like absorbing the odor as much as it is just like aggressively sending out a fresh scent on top of a nasty scent so you kind of get both a bad smell and a good smell at the same time which to me in my experience has just like equaled a slightly less bad but still pretty bad smell baking soda i've heard that a lot of people will sprinkle baking soda into their shoes because baking soda is a pretty common household deodorizer but the thing is it actually doesn't have a lot of antibacterial properties against a lot of common household bacteria and another thing with putting powdery stuff in your shoes like chalk which i've done before is that if you don't do a good job at cleaning the chalk and the dust and the powder out of your shoes, it's gonna get stuck in there, it's gonna mix with whatever sweat, grossness, dirt is present in your shoes. You get the picture why that might not be a good idea. I also read that you should freeze or bake your shoes because bacteria don't like extreme temperatures. And first of all, I just wanna say you never wanna bake your shoes. You just don't wanna expose your shoes to extreme temperatures. And baking your shoes, I just feel like the rubber would melt. That's the truth. As far as freezing your shoes, as someone with a scientific background, we actually do keep bacterial strains frozen and are able to restreak them. So they're not dead, they're just dormant putting your shoes in your freezer is not going to kill the bacteria. Last thing is wearing socks. This is a hot topic because while socks do wick away some of the moisture, a lot of people will say that they reduce your sensitivity when you're on footholds. I've actually never worn socks with my climbing shoes, so I can't testify to this, but there are some people that say it doesn't hinder their performance, while some people aggressively mock people who wear socks with shoes. So, I mean, it's really up to you. If you're at a point in your climbing where it doesn't make a difference and you wanna wear socks, it's your life and I'm not gonna stop you. Hey guys, it is officially the day that I had originally planned to post the video, so um, we'll see whether that happens. I thought that I would come to you today to talk about my findings, trying to find the perfect shoe deodorizer for you. Right off the bat, I think that if you have really dirty shoes that need intense cleaning, go in with one of the scrubbing techniques. I don't think that the sprays are gonna do as good a job actually getting rid of physical dirt and grime that has been accumulating, if that is the case for you. I will say if you are just maintaining shoes that are already kind of clean, do go in with one of the sprays every once in a while. And I think between the two sprays, I'm already in my head, I'm thinking someone in the comments is going to tell me that Lysol's like really toxic for your skin, but I mean, my climbing gym uses it, so you can call them. The Lysol spray was the only one out of all of these treatments that actually left a scent behind, which I actually didn't really like, and um, I, don't, I don't know if I trust Lysol like that. I was really surprised by how well the isopropyl alcohol was able to deodorize, even though the shoe probably still has like some dirt from outdoor trips and stuff, at least 
it smells a little bit better. So isopropyl alcohol is a little bit cheaper. So I guess with the sprays, that's the one that I would personally recommend. As for the actual scrubbing, I could not tell a difference between either of them, but maybe that's just, you know, the nice antibacterial soap, which I carefully chose because it smelled so good, actually didn't leave a scent. So I guess in retrospect, that's a good thing because I didn't really want my shoes to smell like anything. I don't know what my logic is. The vinegar worked really well. My shoes did not smell like vinegar afterwards and they, they look pretty clean. That is my official report of the efficacies of these treatments. And so take that as you will and Back to you, Jen of the past. So those are some effective and maybe not so effective ways of deodorizing and disinfecting your shoes, using stuff that you can get from the grocery store for as little as a buck, and maybe using stuff that you have already lying around your house. You don't have to go out and buy some fancy shoe deodorizer. I know this might be kind of a weird video, but let's be real, this is something that all of us climbers have had to deal with at some point or another, and if you haven't dealt with it, what are you doing? This was a fun experience for me, and moving forward, I'm definitely gonna take better care of my shoes. So, best of luck to you who are going to do the same thing, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye. So those are all of the, <laughs> did you hear my arm just crack? Good luck getting them off.